G'day everybody. Well, it's about time for an autopsy. And today we've got this Bitsa two-cylinder reciprocating refrigeration compressor. Uh, model number 2DC22Y-40S. Uh, I pulled this one out of work the other day. We're not 100% sure on why it failed, which is sort of why I'm going to do this video. But, um, apparently it was, uh, seizing up like it had run for a bit and then it had completely stopped sort of thing so I have a feeling it may, it may actually be bearing failure or otherwise oil or lubrication problems even though there is plenty of oil in it going by the little sight glass down there yeah it's lines about there if you can see it so it's well over the uh well over the minimum line so I'm not 100% sure on what's going on with it but uh we're going to pull it apart and have a bit of a look inside, also show you how these sort of work and um, yeah, find out why it failed. They're a very simple machine. There's no actual oil pump on these uh, these little compressors. I mean, it looks it's bloody huge compared to your fridge compressor, but these are tiny compared to some of the ones I've seen. Um, you got your suction valve here, which is the always on any compressor will be the larger uh, pipe that you discharge. Comes in through a little strainer into the head. Pistons compress it to a high uh, high temperature, and then comes out the discharge to your uh, either through an oil separator if the system's got one, or straight into the uh, condenser, depending on uh, what's in your system. But any hoot, well uh get some tools out and get this thing apart and have a look yeah the oil's definitely an interesting colour so I have a feeling she may be shot inside that's a 2 litre uh, milk bottle so I'll see how much I get out of it yeah it's just all this grey grey colour in it can't really see because of the light but there is a um, bit of a metallic tinge almost to it so it's a very faint I'm going to put some here on it and you can sort of see it it's just a bit of coral flute there is definitely little uh, particles in the uh, in the oil I really don't know how well the camera is going to show it but well, there's something there and that's all that's not dirt on this that's actually out of the oil so it's Probably not looking good. I don't think I'll be fixing this one up and using it as an air compressor, unfortunately. Okay, well I've got the main uh, end plate and crankshaft bearing journal off. And it's actually pretty damn good inside. There's, uh, I've just been having a bit of a play around with it. There's no uh, play in the bearings at all. I mean, there's a little bit of axial, the whole thing. That's pretty normal, that, for it to float around a bit. But in terms of actual nod rock, there's, oh, sorry, uh, rod knock. It's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it, that one? <laughs> um, yeah, in terms of rod knock, there's barely any. It feels just fine. I mean, there's a very mild amount of scoring on this uh, bearing journal here when you run your finger over it. But there's no deep gashes or anything. You can sort of see it there. I don't know how well the camera's going to want to pick it up. But, uh... I'm going to be going through and taking pictures of all of this just to uh, show them back at work or what I've found. I'll even uh, link this video so if they're really interested they can see, the, see me pulling it apart and talking shit about it, which is what I'm good at doing. But uh, yeah, again, I don't actually know if these bits has used white metal in their bearings because um, white metal is something I do see quite a bit of working on the the larger compressors, the big Micom recips and things, and the big screw compressors, they're, uh, they've all got white metal bearings because they're the bits that wear. And usually if it's flogged out you'll actually see little bits of white metal particle in the, the oil. But I mean, like I show, the oil's pretty well used, pretty uh, dark grey, so it may just be worn out. I mean, like they, these things don't necessarily throw their, throw their rods and catastrophically kill themselves when they they fail, they are, uh, it may just stop pumping and 
you never know. But what I'll do is I'll get the head off, we'll have a look at the valves, and I'll show you how those all work. We'll have a look at the tops of the pistons, and then I'll pull a back end off and we'll have a look at the motor and just see what condition that's in. And if it's good, I'll uh, ohm it up and just see what the windings are like, and if it's alright, we'll uh, put it back together and maybe even find a couple of capacitors, give it a run. It'd be nice. Okay, so here's the valves. This side's your suction side. There's your discharge valves there. They're uh, well used. They still work all right though. They're still sitting flat. Normally when they're uh, when they're shot, you just see they're all bent up and sort of stuck. You feel you get a little particle stuck underneath and it stops them snapping shut. But, uh, a little bit of a muck on them. Other than that, that'll clean up all right. They're actually all right. As I turned it over just before I pulled it off, just spun the spun the crankshaft, turned the pistons over, and you could definitely hear them pulling air through and making a clicking noise. But, uh, they're all all right, which is good. See little bits of logo there. I don't know how well that's going to focus on it. Yeah, you get the idea. Here's the top of the head as well. See the uh, cylinders. They're alright. Again, I've been mucking around with them, so... I'm sort of pushing them like that sort of thing. They're, uh, they're alright. I still feel alright. There's a few tiny little score marks on the uh, inside. Other than that, it uh, looks alright. There's no, like a same thing on that, there's no big deep cuts or anything. I mean, there's a little line there, but that's probably just from carbon or something. Because these do run pretty hot. They are, they run hot enough to put marks on the insides of them. But, uh, that's alright. I'll clean the tops of those up. I don't think I'll bother trying to pull them out. I know you'd probably all love to see, see the actual pistons, but, uh, I don't know how I get them back in again, so because I do, I do want to try and keep this if it's all right. I want to try to try to fix it up if it's if I can. But uh, definitely have to reuse these gaskets and things. I know you're not supposed to, but I'm not going to pay silly amounts of money for new ones. Next up, we'll get the arse end off and also that terminal box. And lastly, is the back end. The motor stator looks just fine. I mean, it could be a whole whole different story up the other end, so I'll have to uh, aim it up and just find out. But other than that, it actually looks it looks really good. Still got its uh, varnish on it, because they do put a, a very light coating of varnish on these before they put them in. But, uh, yeah, a bit of um, metallic paste. I don't know where it's come from. I have a feeling it may have just be a very, very dirty soot. Uh, system that this thing's come out of that's where all this uh, black craps come from may just be dirty coils and things Is it uh, this was used on a co2 chiller, so it was running pretty much running flat out all the time so uh, It's a mystery really on where it's uh why it failed But here's just a quick look at the the terminal box. It's got a little uh, overload protector here if I can, uh, Here we go so uh, Kerwin, no Kriwan. It's German as well. All of, all of this stuff's German. That that just sits sits in there. So that's probably what was saving these motor windings, because it's it's it would have gotten hot, obviously, if it's just sitting there, seizing up all the time, and uh, losing pressure. But um, yeah, that's your your three phase input there. It's been wired in star by the looks of things. I think stars when you go across one side and deltas when you go in um, one, two, three, just go directly across. So uh, I think you've actually got to have it in delta in order to run it with a capacitor on single phase. I'm really not sure though. Yeah, that is, uh, is your uh, wiring diagram there. So that's in star at the moment. So there's two ways of wiring three phase here in Australia. It's delta and star. And there's 
tons and tons of videos out there on how to do that so I might have to watch a few myself and before I go I'm trying to wire this up but other than that there's nothing wrong with this thing it can run again quite easily which is good I'll um, get my multimeter out and just see what it's what they're all reading and uh, just find out and then I can put it back together I'm going to buy a variable speed drive I think for this because I do need to get one at some point so I can run other three phase motors because I'm probably going to be seeing more and more working ones in the future so I might as well just get one just to play around with and just uh, set it up maybe with this one and do it uh, Aussie 50 did with a DW and Copeland just do a similar setup just mount it on some nice wheels just have a couple of good sturdy hoses on it I might leave these stop valves on they're just sitting on at the moment but, uh, I'll bolt them down properly and put some nice fittings on it and make a really good little air compressor out of this it's definitely uh, definitely not going to waste now that I know it works but, uh, anywho I hope you enjoyed that but that's a uh, bit uh as the model number again 2DC-22Y-40S two cylinder refrigeration compressor hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching yeah.